Happy Monday morning to you, everyone. Welcome back to Morning Musings. My name is Don K. Preston. I am the president of Preterist Research Institute of Ardmore, Oklahoma. Couple of things before I get into today's video. Do not forget the brand new book, The Last Enemy and the Triumph of Christ by Daniel Rogers. I'm just really, really pleased with the reception and the interest in this brand new book. It's not a large book, but as I have suggested to you, it is very easy reading. It, he goes into some wonderful detail to demonstrate that Paul in 1 Corinthians 15 is focused on spiritual death, not biological death. And the word studies are what attracted me and just really grabbed hold of me. And I have a few copies to be given away free if you're a new student to Covenant Eschatology. Uh, you don't already have a library of books. Or if you're a little strapped for money right now, I have a few copies left. Go to my website, BibleProphecy.com. Send me an email through there, <clears throat> pardon me, and say, I, I don't have a library. I'm a new student, et cetera, et cetera. And I'll be glad to send you a copy free of charge thanks to one of our very generous viewers who wanted to make this book available to as many people as possible. So it's a great little book, The Last Enemy and the Triumph of Christ. I mean, after all, the name itself really, really grabs our attention. Don't forget, March 16th through the 18th, Victoria, Texas, I will be there to speak for three days. I've already heard from many of you who say, hey, that's not too terribly far from me. I didn't know there was anything going on in Houston. Well, there is in the Houston area. So come be with us. The information is on my Facebook page or it's, uh, it's on BibleProphecy.com. So come be with us. Uh, there's just an awful lot going on. I mean to tell you, there's a lot going on right now. There are four public debates on covenant eschatology scheduled for this year. That's just the ones that I know about. I, I'm telling you, it's exciting. Okay. In 1 Corinthians chapter 15, Paul said, Then comes the end, when he shall deliver up the kingdom to the Father. Then shall the Son also himself be subject to the Father. Then shall God be all in all. It's interesting to me that this final phrase, is very, very overlooked, commonly overlooked, in the commentaries. Now, there are certainly some who pay attention to it. But what I find so fascinating is the paucity of intertextuality that is commented on, and that is that phrase, then shall God be all in all, as it relates to Old Testament prophecy. <clears throat> and we have, I tell you, this is incredible. When I found this years and years ago, I was stunned that I was not reading more commentaries to make comment about it. I didn't even read this connection that I'm about to share with you from a commentary. It was just like, God shall be all in all, Zechariah. Now, what does Zechariah predict? Well, in order to fully understand it, we would have to do a comprehensive study of the term in that day. We don't have time this morning. But in that day is the critical eschatological term employed by the prophet to speak of the messianic time, Jesus' generation, when the shepherd would be struck, when a remnant of Israel would be saved. When they would look upon him whom they had pierced, and all the land of Israel would mourn. So this is the context. Now watch this. In Zechariah 14, Behold, the day of the Lord is coming. Your spoil will be divided in your midst, for I will gather all the nations to battle against Jerusalem. The city shall be taken, the houses rivaled, uh, rifled, the women ravished. Half of the city shall go into captivity, but the remnant of the people shall not be cut off from the city. Then the Lord will go forth to fight against those nations as he fights in the day of battle. And in that day, see, there's that little pregnant term. 
His feet will stand on the Mount of Olives, which faces Jerusalem on the east, and on the, and the Mount of Olives shall be split in two from east to west, making a very large valley. Half the mountain shall move toward the north, half toward the south. Now I'm going to skip down very, very quick. Thus, verse 5, last part, the Lord my God will come and all the saints with you. And it shall come to pass in that day that there shall be light or excuse me, no light, the lights will diminish. It shall be one day, which is known to the Lord, by the way, which is Matthew 24, 36, neither day nor light, but at evening time it shall happen that it be light. And in that day shall be, it shall be that living water shall flow from Jerusalem, half of them toward the eastern sea, half of them toward the western sea. What is the living waters? That's resurrection, folks. Living water is the image of resurrection. So here is the day of the Lord coming with all of his saints and the river of life, which is Revelation 22, verse 1 and 2. Now watch this, verse 9. And the Lord shall be king over all the earth, and in that day it shall be. The Lord is one and his name, one. So what do we have? In 1 Corinthians 15, we have the time of the end, at the coming of the Lord, and the resurrection, which is the time of the river of life, flowing from the new Jerusalem. And in that day, God shall be all in all. What do we find in Zechariah? The day of the Lord coming with his saints. The time of the end. The time of the resurrection, the river of life. <clears throat> and in that day, the Lord shall be one. Now, when would all of this take place? Where does Paul put, excuse me, where does Zechariah put this? Well, behold, the day of the Lord is coming. Your spoils shall be divided in your midst. I will gather all nations to battle against Jerusalem. It is at the time of the coming of the Lord to destroy Jerusalem. To save the remnant, to be sure, but to destroy Jerusalem. Now, folks, this agrees perfectly with 1 Corinthians 15 when Paul said that the resurrection, i.e. the time of the river of life, would be when the law, that was the strength of sin, was removed. The law, that was the strength of sin, was the law of Moses. Here's Zechariah, time of the end of Old Covenant Israel. 1 Corinthians 15, the end of Torah. <clears throat> Perfect correlation. And thus, when we come to 1 Corinthians 15, and Paul talks about the end, he's not talking about the end of time. He's talking about the end of Old Covenant Israel, the time of the destruction of Jerusalem, the time of the resurrection. This is powerful, powerful stuff. This is irrefutable evidence positing the resurrection. The resurrection of 1 Corinthians 15 at the time of the fall of Jerusalem, the end of the Old Covenant Age in A.D. 70. And we've got more. So we'll see you on the flip side. Don't forget, contact me for a copy of The Last Enemy and the Triumph of Christ. It's $8 to those who can. To those who can't, contact me. I've got a few copies left. Not many, but I've got a few copies that you want, and you can have a copy absolutely free. Well, once again, we'll see you on the flip side.